chats and you probably noticed a different background, but it's raining where I usually go and it's too heavy, it's too loud. So have a look at the world, very exciting. This month we're talking about perseverance. And I've got the lovely Joe Phillips, who I've done a lot of work with, who is going to be talking about a manager's toolkit for perseverance. So hi, Joe, how are you going? Good morning, Claire. Yeah, really good, thank you. Really good. And actually, I love the map as a background. I think it should be a thing. I'm Yeah, I like it. Excellent. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So thank you very much. So, um, Joe, first of all, we just start off with letting everyone know where you are in the world, speaking of the world map. Speaking of the world, but absolutely. So my name is Jo Phillips. So good to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm actually based just outside of Welling Garden City in Hertfordshire. Um, so yes, I've been here now for coming up for, oh gosh, seven years now. Um, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So I have a, I have a nearly 11 year old. So a son who's just about to finish primary school. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and like I say, yeah. based in, based in Hearts. Lovely. So you've told us a little bit about yourself. So tell us, what do you actually do? Yeah, so I've now been working in the talent acquisition, the recruiting arena for the best part of 30 years. In fact, I'm going to stop saying 30 years. I don't like that. I'm just going to go with a couple of decades and leave it there. Right. Because <laughs> There's a point where you don't like saying it. Um, and actually, that the work that I do is very much around customising learning and development for recruiters and talent acquisition. And, it, and it's really about the ability to enable either recruiters or their leaders to get the absolute most out of their day-to-day -day roles. That's the work I do. So you, you mentioned that dreadful word 30 years there. I know exactly how you feel. Um, so you've obviously been on a journey. So if you can tell us with regards to your story about perseverance, how it has helped you along your journey. Oh my goodness. So look, I mean, yeah, I, I, I fell into the recruiting world when I was 19, didn't really know what it was, didn't really understand it. At that point, and I'm sure um, there were lots of people in the same position as me, at that point, you were literally thrown a yellow pages, you were thrown a phone, <laughs> see what business you can bring in. And <laughs> you weren't necessarily given any structured learning and development you certainly weren't given support nobody even talked about mental health oh my goodness all we talked about was the commerciality aspects of the role and his in targets you know the metrics and so I think even from a really young age I had to figure out what perseverance looked like and sometimes that meant that I didn't really feel like picking up the phone I didn't really feel like speaking to another candidate but you had to learn quite quickly that the only way to get the traction in the job was to put one foot in front of the other and just continue. Continue. And, and so... Yeah, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, and so, and so my story really starts at that tender young age of being really quite naive, not really understanding what the industry was all about. But I quickly watched some role models who were excellent at what they did and very quickly developed and I developed to a point where I was ready to move into learning and development which is my absolute passion it's what I do this industry is all about people and learning and development is you know at the center of it is people at the center of it is helping their confidence it's developing their skills so they can do what they need to do and they can persevere um and so I worked initially for a company called Staffline that was teeny, teeny, tiny at the time. I think we had maybe 11 branches and the business owners still used to wander around the offices. Well, of course, now it's a, it's a much larger organisation, but this is going back in the day. I then went to work for a company called Kelly Services, which some people will recognise as being a much more American-based brand. Um, and I think they were more recently taken over by Interaction in the UK, perhaps a couple of decades ago. I then went on to work for a company called Adeco. And with a deco, that was where I was then in a position to take a leadership role. And I then moved into learning and development with a deco and had the absolute pleasure of training thousands of recruiters in person. And I thought it was the best job ever. I loved it. Um, there was then a point where, and again, this is where perseverance really becomes key. There was a point where I realized that actually my development was being stunted. I was on a corporate wheel with a huge organization and what I needed to do was invest more 
in me. I needed to go ahead and get more qualifications. I needed to be in a position where I could really move my career in a slightly different trajectory. So I then went to work for a smaller boutique, still national agency. And I worked for them for a number of years and developed all of their learning and development. And again, trained hundreds, if not thousands of recruiters, their side as well as in person and their leadership teams. And I guess the key around the perseverance piece for me was, you know, there were some times where I could be up at half four in the morning, driving to an office, this is before COVID, right? This is before the whole hybrid piece. This is before the whole, you know, we work from home. And um, I could be up, I could be driving to an office. I could be there at 8.30 in the morning. We then might do the entire day with various different team members back in the car, driving again to the next hotel to stay over, to do some, to do exactly the same thing, but in another area. And I think... Yeah. Yeah. For me, I started to really develop the perseverance around actually what was my energy, what was I bringing to the day, what was the feedback that was coming back. And actually, when you get that amazing feedback, perseverance suddenly kicks in a little bit more, right? Yeah, definitely. That sounds amazing. Thank you for that, Joe. And we're talking to managers mainly here, and it can be really, really tough being a manager, as you're aware, because you're answering to the top as well as answering to your team. So what are three tips that you would give managers for them and their teams to be able to get through all of those knockbacks that we have a lot, especially in the recruitment industry, um, and get back on top with that perseverance? What would be the tips? So I think, you know, lived experience tells me that as managers, you're squeezed, aren't you? You're squeezed from both areas. You know, the lead, leadership team wants what they want and the team want what they need. And in my experience and the way, again, as a leader, I've managed managers is put your team first. Team are front and center of whatever we're doing. And actually, in many ways, the noise, it is just noise that comes from leadership. It's just noise. And the noise will usually be we want more. In whatever guise, yeah. you know, so it's in, in however it's been communicated, usually it's we want more or it needs to be sooner in whatever yeah. way. And so I think in the first instance, put the team first. And that means really understanding what each team member requires. So you might have a team member that actually really needs to spend a little bit more time mm. at home. Mm, yeah everyone goes oh in recruitment oh yeah how can that happen especially pre-covid that was a big <laughs> no no <laughs> so how can you as a manager bend and flex to that yeah how can you help that individual yeah to the point where they can then really focus and they can deliver yeah yeah you might have another team member who is so focused at the time and all they need from you, all they need is recognition. Yeah. You know, and I've I've seen managers when um I've seen managers when people are on a roll and they're they're on a roll, they're hitting targets, they're doing really well. And I've seen managers say, Well, well done for doing your job. Whoa. And you think, <laughs> wow, you know, wow, actually what that person is looking for is recognition and credibility. Uh, uh, recognition and, and a real opportunity to be able to say hey I, I've done it celebrate me so yeah. celebrate them because yeah. that's what they need yeah. and I think I think as a manager it's about understanding that each individual in the team has a different need yeah now your role is to work to that need yeah Definitely. figure it out whatever the need might be mm -hmm. and cater to it yeah because yeah. actually it's only you're only ever going to get noise from leadership and I've been in both positions right I've been noisy yeah and yeah. I've been in the position whereby I've received noise but that's all leadership is it's noise yeah. to get to where you want to be and that's that's the job that's you know they're on the North yeah. Star vision they're taking the business they're influencing but actually as a manager try and separate the two yeah definitely, definitely. and I think by by being collaborative and and so I guess I guess my, my first is cater for each individual in the team yeah my second is as a manager provide data provide insights, provide information, give, give to your team. So every day, give a nugget. 
what can your team talk to clients about? What can your team talk to candidates about? What's going on in the industry? Yeah. Don't be so insular in terms of mm-hmm. what's going on around us. Actually have that third eye, be looking around, be that person that the team listens to, to say, oh, it's a good idea. I'll use that on a call today. Yeah, yeah. Some data, some insights just to inspire. So I think the first is to have empathy with the team. The second is to inspire. And then I think the third piece is really about being as supportive as you possibly can be. Yeah. And what I mean by support is I don't mean, I don't mean that people, I don't mean to be soft. I don't mean to be yeah. um, a pushover. I don't mean any of those things. But be supportive. Right. So if we're not quite where we need to be, what are the reasons behind it and how can we support? How can we develop? How can we train? What can we do? Yeah, definitely. Rather than automatically writing people off. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, you know, it's a case where you're working in a very target driven environment and it's being supportive, not only when people are not achieving their targets, but also when they are achieving them and not just saying, great, you've achieved your target, what else can you do? It's like being supportive. Okay, brilliant, we've achieved our target. Let's talk about how you did it, where I can support you so that we continue to achieve it. Da, 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 da. So Absolutely. I've so many different methods of management. And one of the ones that I've found is a very, very detrimental and means that people don't bounce back and aren't, don't show perseverance is when, they're great you've achieved the target well what next well let's celebrate that <laughs> think celebrate it you know yeah. and celebrate it in the way that that individual likes to be That's celebrated amazing. i've had the pleasure of leading some absolutely awesome and i mean awesome yeah. recruiters and recruiting managers and actually some people don't want to be externally celebrated some people want to hide in the corner and carry on doing what they're doing and so find a way find a way that works for them them. my name is quiet thank you in the corner definitely absolutely brilliant joe so i'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would love to meet you and get in contact so where can people find you so they can find me at readyingrecruiters.co.uk they can find me on LinkedIn right. and, and I would, I absolutely love to hear from people that I've never heard from before. And um, I'm such a, I'm so interested to hear much more about the business and about the challenges. We'll talk about what we might or might not be able to help with. Um, but I think it's all about collaboration and I really come from a very collaborative place. It's all about building relationships in this industry. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joe. You've had such brilliant insights, such wise words. So thank you and take care. Thank you, Claire. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.